Hey everybody, we are here today at Living Vitality Kombucha Brewery and we're gonna give you the grand tour of their brand new facility. It's beautiful, it's amazing. Let's go inside and meet Daniel and check it out. So hey, Daniel, how are Hi, you? Hi, Kathy, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. How's everyone, how are you? And if you guys haven't checked out, uh, we did a brewery tour of your old facility with your um, like place that you were before this. Now this is that place, but way cooler. That's right. So, so we moved uh, a few months ago into this new space. It's about two and a half times larger. So we have two and, two and a half times more space and uh, we upgraded a few things so we're going to take you around to show you like some of our upgrades and exciting new things that we have going awesome. on here. So before we get started can you tell us a little bit first of all about what kombucha is and how you got started doing it? Yeah absolutely. Cool. So kombucha is fermented tea. It's a probiotic, it's good for digestion, it helps detox the liver, and it's very high in antioxidants. So mm -hmm. with those three things it kind of brings your body back into a natural state of, of health and balance which is super important nowadays that everybody is boosting their immunity as much as they can. That's right. All the crazy virus junk that's going around right now. So all of this is hopefully going to help support people's immune systems, right? That's and right. so tell everybody too how you got started. Yeah, so about eight years ago I started uh, with kombucha. I was sitting at a desk job and my coworker brought in his kombucha, uh, homemade, and he asked me to try it. So I tried it. I fell in love with it from the start. Two weeks later, I started brewing it myself and doing a lot of different flavors, a lot of different concoctions, and mm -hmm. kind of brewing about a, a, two gallons at a time, and it grew from there. So I finally moved, moved um, the business, or I started in my kitchen, yep. and then eventually moved to a commissary kitchen, and then a shared space, a, a 1,200 square foot uh, brewery, and then finally here, 3,200 square feet. That's awesome. So for all of you home brewers, Take note, because yeah, you can grow starts it. starts very small, yeah. <laughs> cool, let's have the tour, cool. take us around. All right, so we'll start over here. We'll do a clockwise right. uh, tour. Over here, we have our six fermenters. These are 160 gallons each, or 600 liter fermenters. Wow. This takes about three weeks to ferment mm -hmm. tea, okay? So over here, we have a tote. What we use this for is for mixing flavors. Mm -hmm. Once the kombucha is ready, we like to put the flavors in right. and then if we do large batches like say 35 or 40 kegs at a time mm -hmm. we can mix everything in here and then fill from here directly into the kegs and do you do they do a second ferment in this how long does it stay in this thing it just um, it's just for mixing oh, okay. so it's only staying in there for about a couple hours okay. until we pump it into the kegs right. and then we second ferment it in the fridge awesome in the refrigerator. In so the refrigerator. How, how many gallons is that total between these six? I couldn't do the math on that. Yeah, so it's about um, just under a thousand gallons. Wow. Yeah, so we can do about a thousand gallons every three weeks or so. Yeah, so, so we can brew a little less when demand is a little lower or mm -hmm. a little bit more when demand's higher. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. And over here, as we continue, these smaller ones are 80 gallons or 300 liter fermenters. And what we do here is we save um, the, the older kombucha and use this as starter. So we start from here, we use a certain percentage, and then inoculate the bigger ones with, with fresh tea and sugar. Right. Okay, yeah. so you keep all your starter in here. So like when you're at home, if you make like a gallon of kombucha, then usually you have like a cup or so of starter tea that you'll put in. Yeah, exactly. So this is basically that on a much bigger scale. That's right. Are the yeah. scobies inside here? Yeah, they are. Can we check them out? Sure. This one's a nice looking one. Come see this? And it's very vinegary. As soon as you open it up, you can kind of yeah. like... Oh, wait, can you tell us about the cloth that's on top here? So yeah, so this cloth is... Uh, I made this with a hoop. And that's smart. Yeah, so that it's easy to take off and on. Mm -hmm. And I sewed it and I put the hoop underneath of it. And this is linen. I really love the material linen. It's mm -hmm. all natural. It's made from the flax plant and it's mm -hmm. very high vibration. And I drew a heart on it. That's and. And we use it as a, as a cover. It needs to breathe. So here is a SCOBY. This is a new SCOBY that formed on this starter. I see you have this big paddle thing. Could you mm -hmm. like 
Are we allowed to poke at it? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I kind of want to see what it looks like, like how, how fat yeah, it is. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go like slowly on the side over here. Oh, this nice. one is pretty thin, but it they is, can yeah. grow, you know, they grow about a quarter to a half inch every two weeks or so in thickness. So we kind of keep it small and um, that way it keeps the kombucha nice and clean and healthy. Yeah. That's one of our tricks. If you haven't ever seen a SCOBY in person, it it's a little unnerving because it definitely looks like a living creature. It is a living creature, That's but right. it looks like a jellyfish, literally. Like yeah. the texture and the, like it's kind of, you know, the some opacity folks, of it, it's pretty cool. Some folks think that it's a mushroom, uh -huh. and so they call it a mushroom tea, but it's not a mushroom. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is in the fungus family because of the yeast mm -hmm. that it has, but it's a community of bacteria and yeast. So SCOBY is a symbiotic community of bacteria and yeast. Awesome. And um, that's sort of like along the same lines of people that, they have like starters for like um, sourdough bread. Sourdough bread, yeah. And kefir and, uh, and stuff like that. Sauerkraut, kimchi, all those yeah. things. Yeah, they, they require starters. Cool. So it's basically just saving a little bit of, um, of the final product mm -hmm. and making sure that it's still alive, not pasteurized. Yeah. And then uh, using that to start the new the new product. Do these guys start to grow scobies in them too? They do, yeah. yeah. So uh, after the batch is done, we scoop out the scoby and we actually gift that. We we compost it to in the land mm -hmm. or we give it to other folks that, that need it. Nice. That, that would like it, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So, that's the cool part about um, scobies is that they just keep multiplying. You can keep giving them. Exactly. Them. <laughs> Sharing yeah. the love. The gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> yes. Cool. So what's next? We have our kegerator here, so when we have uh, customers that come in uh, or guests that come in, we can, we can serve them kombucha here. We have you know, four different flavors on tap. And this is a typical kegerator that we, we um, provide for some of our uh, retail customers. Mm -hmm. So they can have up to four flavors in, you know, at a time. So. Does the keg itself add um, like a not nitrogenated or Carb whatever. Carbonated? Carb yes. Yeah. My brain doesn't work anymore. So yeah, carbonation. Does yeah. the keg add carbonation to it or is it just the natural carbonation? So there is natural carbonation that builds over time. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but for us to make it consistent, we use a CO2 tank and set mm -hmm. it to a certain pressure. That way it's always carbonated at the same level. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. but, but it is the same CO2, the same carbon dioxide uh, molecule that the kombucha actually provides by itself. Yeah. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. So I wanted to show you our new mural. This is made by uh, a, dear, a dear friend of mine and also a, um, a local artist. Her name is Brett Tachi. And uh, she designed this whole mural, you know, within a matter of a couple weeks and we got it done. And it really brings this it's place so beautiful to life. Yeah. yeah I love it. It's really vibrant and amazing. And I, I have my peace colors. lily here. So I really like having the plants, you know, the clean air and everything yeah. around. So it's super nice. Now I wanted to show you uh, one of the upgrades that we did for this place is uh, we installed a whole house filter. So it's a mm -hmm. two-step filter. We tapped it into the main water line from up there. Right. It comes down. And so basically everything in here is filtered. All the cold and hot water is filtered. That way um, when we wash dishes, when we wash our kegs, you know, wow. there's, there's no spots, you know, everything is clean, we can drink from any tap, it's really nice. That's super nice. Um, and then another upgrade that we did was put in a on-demand water heater. Mm -hmm. So this saves a lot of energy and money, mm -hmm. um, and we get hot water as soon as we need it, we don't need to heat up a tank. Wow. So it's this little tiny thing over here. So it's really great. Um, so, you know, we split the line, the filtered line, into a, a hot line and then a cold line and goes into the kitchen. But I'll show you on the other side our, our additional filtering system that we mm -hmm. use for the uh, fermenters. Cool. So with that on-demand hot water heater, I know those things are pretty pricey. How long do you think it'll take to like compensate for the cost of that with like versus a tank heater? Um, They're actually the not too bad. It's, it's, um, it's a small price difference, maybe 50% more. Mm -hmm. But um, we already see like the price uh, of our electricity is, is way down from really? the other place. Yeah, even even though we have like more AC units, yeah, it's for some reason it's like half half of our what? electric bill, which is great. I know water heaters do suck yeah. up a lot of yeah. energy. And in costs. the other place, we were we were turning off the water heater tank every time we come in and out, but it mm -hmm. still takes a long time for it to heat up, and yeah. we run out of hot water. But this one we don't. You never run out. No, it just keeps going. 
<laughs> on demand. You need to get one of those. <laughs> cool. So we split the line over there, and then the cold water line runs over here. And this is an additional three uh, triple filter set. Okay. And then mm -hmm. this really cool thing here is a water meter. So it's a flow meter. So we can set the exact number of gallons we want to fill because mm -hmm. we, we like to do it at a fl low flow rate, uh, like a one gallon per minute. Right. So that would take 160 minutes to fill one of those. And uh -huh. who has that time to sit around and wait for right. it? So we just set it and forget it and it turns off as soon as uh, it fills. So this thing, can you show us how that, how yeah. that works? Yeah, so basically um, this is... It's like a dentist. Yeah, it's like a little, a little <laughs> water fountain. That's cool. Um, we set the gallons here and then we run, we let it run, or hit the run button, and then um, we just let it go. And then as soon as it fills up completely um, to whatever gallons it is, 100 mm -hmm. gallons, 120 gallons, it stops automatically. Is so, there a benefit to having a slow flow rate versus just like yeah. pushing it in there? Because uh, the water sits in the filter a little longer, so mm -hmm. it takes out more of the chemicals and more oh, of the chlorine. Nice. Yeah. So we're filtering twice, so that our water is very, very clean. Wow, yeah. that's great. So Good to know. Just, uh, high quality water to make high quality bucci. Yeah, so this was <laughs> fun. This is like a little bit of the engineering that I, that I love to do in yeah. electronics. So that was, that was great. That's awesome. <laughs> So the other difference with this place is in the, other, in the old place, we had everything in one room, the mm -hmm. kitchen, uh, the production, the storage and all that. Mm -hmm. to, uh, now we have a separate, a separate room for the kitchen and our bottling system. So let's, okay. you wanna go in there? Yeah, let's check it all out. Right. Check out the bottling. So we'll go into the kitchen first. This actually used to be three offices, okay? This wow, main- so what was in here before? Um, you know? There was another bit like a, a floor sweeping business. Oh, okay. It was really dirty. It was nasty. We it's redid ironic. everything from the floors to the to the roof. It was an incredible amount of work. Yeah. But this was three offices, and we cut out the wall here, uh -huh. and then this wall, and we framed it and uh, opened up this kitchen. So it's a it's one large room over here and one right. large room over here. It's super. It's like feels very clean and nice. Yeah. Like we, a super nice workspace in and here. And we were really lucky that we had a drainage in the floor. Mm -hmm. So we piped everything in into the grease trap and then down into the drain. So it's great. Nice. So we have our three base sink. We have mm -hmm. our stainless steel tops, um, hand wash. We have all of our equipment here that we use to flavor. Okay. Um, Can you tell me a little bit about what you, what you do with all that stuff? Like what the process is. Yeah, absolutely. Things. So for example, this is one of our induction stove tops. So mm -hmm. it never really gets hot. It's, it's made with, um, it heats up with uh, magnetic uh, coils. Uh -huh. And we use, you know, one of these pots or maybe even a larger one. Mm -hmm. And we fill it up with a, with a little bit of kombucha and then we add herbs to it mm -hmm. or other flavors mm -hmm. uh, or like berries, for example. And then we heat it and make a concentrate. And that concentrate gets, um, it goes into the kegs or the mixing tote in order right. for it to, to get the flavor. Nice. Yeah. So these are, you know, we have a couple of these. We have a big uh, kettle. So for the kettle, we use like a burner. Wow. Like one of those like frying burners. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we do that all in the open space, which. You um, can also do a giant Thanksgiving turkey with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is 20 gallons. So we can do a whole bunch of like concentrate. And then we have all of our herbs here. A lot of our dry herbs that we use, like cacao nibs, yaupan, which is a Florida um, yerba mate, mm -hmm. uh, peppercorn, cardamom, damiana, and then cinnamon, tulsi, hibiscus. We have a bunch of different herbs that we use for um, flavoring. So do you have a favorite flavor of these, like a personal favorite? I would say gingerberry. Is, uh -huh. It's also the most popular. And yeah. then spice roots, which has uh, lemon, uh, ginger, turmeric, and pepper. Cool. So it's fantastic. Yeah, I think gingerberry is probably my favorite. It's yeah. got a good bite. Can you tell us what tea that you start with and the sugar and everything? Sure, yeah. So here is our tea. This is our organic uh, pinhead gunpowder green tea. So it's got like a little bit of a smoky flavor. It comes mm -hmm. from a, um, a district in, in, um, in China. And we import this uh, using a company in, in New, New Jersey. Wow, it smells amazing. Yeah, it's very fresh. It's really, really good quality and uh, we buy it in bulk and we get a good price on it mm -hmm. and uh, we use this and we actually
cold brew our, our kombucha now. We don't, we don't heat it up, so we're saving energy. Wow. And we experimented with that and it worked out really great. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, like, the, the tricks, one of our trade secrets. Uh, we cold brew it and, and it's, yeah. it's been working out great. So you put this directly in... Um, into the big into fermenters, the big yeah, in big tea bags. And, and then the next cold. day we take it out cold, wow. yeah, room temperature rather. Right, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah. So uh, the sugar, I don't have any sugar here right now, but it's uh, organic cane sugar. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. the only thing we use is organic cane sugar. We keep it simple. Right. Um, and then most of it gets fermented out. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another nice thing about kombucha is that it isn't, it's like a, it's a treat. You feel like you're having, you know, like a soda or something, but it doesn't have all that sugar content. And then you get, without having like loads of added caffeine and stuff, but you still get perked up from all of the, you know, natural things that are in it. And I think yeah. there's like, it's still a trace amount of caffeine that's left in kombucha, yeah. right? Yeah, so kombucha, for the recipe that we use, it's about half of a cup of tea per 12 ounce bottle that we mm -hmm. have in terms of caffeine level. Right. Yeah, so it's not yeah. much, but what not you're much. getting is the B vitamins, you're getting the antioxidants, right. and the, all the probiotics, and that's what really wakes people up, and they right. think that it's caffeine, but it's actually like your body responding to No, a, you feel different. It's, yeah. it's different, because caffeine like blocks that tired feeling. Mm -hmm. I know in the afternoon, when we hit the afternoon slump, we'll have a bottle of kombucha, and then all of a sudden we're like, oh, we can clean the whole house. Like you have right. like actual energy, yeah. which is amazing. Like <laughs> you get revitalized. It's amazing, it yeah. And it's good is. for digestion, yeah. it makes everything regular, it re reduces irritable bowel syndromes, mm -hmm and all sorts of uh, acid reflux, yeah. it's great, it's great. That's awesome. So we'll finish over here. Okay. Um, this is our sanitizer. Mm -hmm. So it's like a really fancy dishwasher. It's a 90 second dishwasher, so wow. it's great. We sanitize all of our equipment here and bottles. Mm -hmm. And then our freezer where we keep some of our cold products. Like um, flavors and things? Yeah. For example, we have uh, juiced ginger that we juice it all mm -hmm. at once and then we freeze a little bit of it. And a little bit. That's a lot of juiced ginger. I don't yeah. know how much ginger it takes to make a little bit of juice. Well, this is like gallons of Oh my of, gosh. Uh, that, yeah, that's, well, this is like lemon pulp. And, you're juicing yeah. tons and tons of, tons <laughs> of things. And we use uh, organic frozen berries. Mm -hmm. um, that way, actually freezing them brings out more flavor and, and brings out more sweetness from the berries and more antioxidants from blueberries i know that yeah they're, they're healthier once you freeze them cool so the next room here is our bottling and labeling room so we what we do is we prep a lot of our bottles mm -hmm. we have all of our labels here um that that we use so we do have, you hand label this how does this work so we use this little machine here okay right now um this is what we've been using for like three years so far mm -hmm. and we're ready to upgrade so the next machine we're going to build or we're going to we're going to order is a a automatic labeler so we're just going to put the bottles in and wow. they're going to label everything and day code it um so that's That'll going to be tons a of time. tons of time <laughs> and, and manual work and it's going to be a, a bit of an investment but mm -hmm. we have the space for it now so nice. we're really looking forward to that then this kegerator here is where we bottle so we do a, a manual like two at a time mm -hmm. um and we've we found out that using this system is just as efficient as the old system that we had um, and we don't have any waste at the end. Which the old system filled like six bottles at once? It was that filled it? four at a time okay. but uh, it would take a lot of the carbonation out uh, so we were having a little bit of trouble with that. Mm -hmm. uh, this keeps the carbonation in so the product is way more consistent. Mm -hmm. So we're wow. really happy with it but this is another thing we'll upgrade in the future to mm -hmm. a more automatic Yeah because you're hand bottling just two at a yeah, time. Yeah, two at a time, yeah. That's, that's a lot of labor to go into. It's a labor of love. It is. <laughs> <laughs> we feel it whenever we drink it. And then behind here is where we prep all the bottles. So these are all sanitized, labeled, and placed upside down so nothing gets into it and ready to be bottled. Nice. So we have a ton. You know, this is the most popular flavor right now is elderberry mm -hmm. because it's, it's a uh, anti-flu um, berry that uh, grows wild here in Florida mm -hmm. and it's um, fantastic for your for your immune system. So we're selling a lot of this right now. Yeah, we have that one on tap for curbside pickup and it is super popular. Mm -hmm. I think everybody is obsessed with elderberry right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a uh, cool. yeah, it's great. And one of the really cool things we're excited about that we've that we've done is uh, the same artist that I use for the murals and these t-shirts, uh, Brett Tachi. <laughs> <laughs> she actually designed this box design as well. So now we have 
uh, our own logo and everything on these boxes. Uh, so we're really happy and these are 12 packs and we're doing home deliveries, contactless home deliveries with these boxes. Nice. We're really happy with this and uh, we'll put a link to her name because she's a really, really awesome artist yeah, and I, I want to promote her. really beautiful. I love that. It goes perfectly, of course, with their whole, you know, theme and design. It's awesome. And then the, the last really cool thing that we upgraded was the walk-in cooler. So mm -hmm. before, we had an 8x10 walk-in cooler, yeah. and now we have a 10x20, so wow. it's two and a half times the space, so we're able to hold a lot more product in here, do everything in bulk, and kind of just put it all in there, and then focus on the other parts of the process during those two or three weeks. Can we check it out? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. Come on <laughs> cool. inside. Let me turn on this. There we go. Oh, nice. Wow. So this is the, the walk-in cooler. On the right is all of our kegs that are finished that are ready to be sold mm -hmm. with all of our flavors here. We have these that were just done that we'll put them on that side eventually. Right. And then all of our bottles that we've um, bottled mm -hmm. and are ready to go. We do it on the, on the left side here in, our, in the boxes, in the new boxes that we have. And then we have some like a la carte flavors. Like if somebody wants a mixed box, we still are able to mix and match wow. like three of this flavor, five of these. Yeah. So we, use, we keep a few out here. Nice. So. so you could do like grab a bottle. So um, could you tell us a little bit too about like who you distribute this to and like the business side of it? Like, is it mainly like wholesale customers? Like, do you have a lot of direct retail people? And what? Do yeah. You do? So before uh, quarantine, it was 100% wholesale, mm -hmm. and it was kegs. The problem with that is that a lot of people were concerned with the self serve. Uh, yes. issue with mm -hmm. um, with the kegs even though a lot of our customers migrated to putting the system behind the counter mm -hmm. so now they they do it for the customer right um, and sanitize and just use new new bottles mm -hmm. um, but when the quarantine hit um, all of that business got really impacted and mm -hmm. we had to pivot to bottles mm -hmm. okay so so now we have bottles that um, we sell to the same wholesale customers right that are that are doing online farmers markets or drops or deliveries or pickups. Right, which is like such what we're as doing. a pharmacy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we also do home delivery now. So we have a van, we have a, a, a couple of days a week. We, mm -hmm. we deliver um, basically a wholesale quantity to an end customer wow. like that really likes kombucha. Yeah, yeah. So they got to have their stock, which yeah. I think I noticed another um, cool thing that you have out here for people who are like really diehard kombucha people, right? Yeah, so we want to show out. you the new sustainable way to get kombucha. This is awesome. <laughs> so what we're doing now is providing home units, okay? Because now, you know, with the bottles, it's great because people can get their individual bottle kombucha, but mm -hmm. then there's waste from the bottle itself. Right. And the whole purpose of this business was to reduce waste and be sustainable. So now what we're doing is setting up home units such as this one. This is a three tap home unit or small business unit that can mm -hmm. be placed in a, in a small office or whatnot. Right. And we deliver the kegs to them. So the kegs are reusable. Yeah. There's no waste. You use your own cup at home or in the office and you fill, fill the, the kombucha from the home unit taps. That is yeah. brilliant. Oh so my goodness. Like for example, this is a commercial kegerator for a, a commercial wholesale retail place. Mm -hmm. And these are the smaller units for... Can I open it up? Yeah, sure. Is There's the uh, Yeah, I'm just still setting that one up. Yeah, but, so the, but the kegs would be inside here. Yeah, so this one can fit three kegs and nice. we have a smaller one that can fit two kegs, two taps. Uh -huh. So those are the two options that we offer. And we sell them. We sell them um, at at the retail value mm -hmm. or basically my cost right or we lease it out so we charge a little bit more per keg mm -hmm. for the person and but we take care of all the maintenance and everything wow yeah this is a great idea i love this idea really i literally want it. one of these in my house because we're talking <laughs> about my husband and i we're talking about doing um like a 30-day kombucha challenge where we drink like a full you know serving yeah. once every day like just document the whole thing so nice. we can see like how we feel just like doing it every day for 30 days not that it's like crazy you know right but having one of these would make that super convenient but yep, um for sure that and this is to me a lot better than having like your own little um bar or whatever like it's mm -hmm. like a healthy you know yeah. so, so people who like to have like a, a beverage to like relax in the evening like you have a beer or whatever this gives that same kind of feel it you does. know but yeah. actually being healthy which is yeah. nice we have this at home and um my fiance and i we enjoy this with 
uh, every meal basically, yeah. lunch, dinner, and we just pour ourselves a, like half a cup or so, and mm -hmm. it's, it's fantastic. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that idea, and I love that it's super sustainable and green and all yeah. of that. Cool. Same here, same here. Awesome. Well, is, I think is that, that's pretty yeah, much Yeah, that's it. I mean, this is where we keep all of our extra items. Um, we have a lot of spare parts in order mm -hmm. to fix anything, like our home units or our kegerator units or our kegs and stuff. You know, we keep extra CO2 tanks there. Um, we got, you know, regulators and towers and everything ready to like build more home units. Yeah, so, so you're not only in the process of like brewing for people, but you actually are like a simple, you're, you're a, in charge of maintaining and keeping up with all these kegs. And, uh, there's a lot involved with that. There's you're a lot not, involved, You're not just yeah. making kombucha. That's you're, right. You're figuring out how to make it accessible to people. Yeah, little so. by little, we grew to where we are now and um, we have to take care of the maintenance side. Mm -hmm. We have to build these units and produce the product and then distribute it. So it's like yeah. the business, I like to do many different things. So this business is perfect because I can use a ton of different skill sets yes. to, to get the work done. As with most small businesses and entrepreneurs, you got to wear all the hats. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know we do too. Yeah. And, and hustling, you know, especially, oh, yeah. especially at times like this yes. where we had to pivot business right. and uh, survive and still pay the rent, right. you know? And, mm -hmm. um, we, yeah, and you guys hadn't been here very long, right? Before all this happened. I mean, it's yeah, only just a been couple a few months. months. Yeah, just yeah. a couple months, and um, it was uh, it was a big surprise. We were worried at first, um, but we were able to work with with like new clientele, and right. then work with the cli the the clients that pivoted their businesses to do um, like deliveries and right. and uh, home pickups and all that. Yeah. Cool. So um, as we're wrapping this up, if you have any advice for people who are wanting to maybe start their own brewery um like steps that they could take or ways that they could find customers i guess what what would you suggest for them as a good way to kind of get started well it always depends on the budget and the level of risk that you want to get into yeah uh, for me i had a small budget and um i wasn't sure you know it was a long time ago kombucha wasn't really popular at the time so i started mm -hmm. small Mm -hmm. You know, I started uh, with minimal, win minimal investment. And as I profited little by little, I was able to invest that back into the business and getting more equipment and all that. Right. So for a stress-free way, that's how I recommend starting is little by little, get your clientele, mm -hmm. um, start building your community. But we have so many different tools now, like social media, yep. to be able to promote yourself, uh, to get your network out there. Right. Before it used to be, you know, who do you know? Like, family mm -hmm. members and all that. So uh, definitely promote yourself a lot through, through Instagram um, and really focus on what your passion is, you know, because I'm a big believer that if you're working on your passion, you know, the money is going to come eventually. Mm -hmm. right. But what you're doing is, is out of love, is out of um, something that you really, truly uh, feel like making a difference in the world. Right. And that is... Um way more fulfilling and important honestly in the long run the money as we have found out because it is hard i mean especially when you go the business goes through hard times and things change but it's as long as you love what you're doing then you know yeah. making a difference is what really yeah. matters yeah so. and magically magically the money comes yes yeah and you, do, you don't even have to think about it it just it just happens that's awesome <laughs> well we love i appreciate you taking the time to show us around and um showing us your beautiful new operation super Thank cool you. we wish you all the best and can't wait to keep drinking more of this kombucha. <laughs> yeah, can't, can't wait to, and, to continue to expand. Yay! If you guys want to um, connect with Daniel, be sure to um, read in the comments. We have, or I mean, sorry, be sure to read in the description. We have all his info on there, um, how you can contact him and where you can find the kombucha. You can shop with us and pick it up right now um, curbside. And so, yeah, I'm sure it's going to all be all kinds of ways that we can keep getting the good stuff to you so thank you so much yeah you. we'll have our email we have our, our website and uh, some other contact information in the in the description of the video awesome sounds good thank you so much daniel thank it's you good thanks for coming all right wait one more thing before we go what is going on over here <laughs> so with all the space uh, i was able to like make a little living room area i found this really cool carpet so sometimes when i'm needing to take a break I just, you come do this. Yeah, I come sit down, <laughs> I play some drums. That's so fun. You should Sometimes basically just move in here. I think I'd be tempted to. <laughs>